Who knew a children's game could make for such compelling television? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Floor is Lava Wipeouts. For this list, we'll be looking at the absolute best wipeouts from the inaugural season of this Netflix competition series. Please note, while there have been some epic, bone-crunching leaps from one obstacle to another, we're only considering true wipeouts, moves that landed competitors in the lava. Number 10, Nick. These three brothers came in talking a big game. The worst possible thing I think that can happen if we don't score any points is going home to our mother. But though they seemed battle ready, the basement had other ideas. Nick, the eldest of the three, makes the risky move of climbing the pyramid, which seemingly never ends well. Nick looking at a nearly eight foot trip to the pyramid tip. Woo! Here goes nothing, bro. He manages to knock over the obelisk, but getting there is a different story. His attempted launch fails spectacularly, and he instead goes skiing down the slope, smacking into the base of the obelisk instead. Nicholas! When we first met the battling bros, we were told that they work in the church and serve in the military. Well, in the Old Testament, Egypt and the firstborn sons have a messy history. Nick went from pyramid to obelisk, only to wind up in the Red Sea. Number 9. Steven The karaoke crew certainly looked dressed for success. Nothing says we came here to win like tuxedo t-shirts. With one of his team members, Todd, already lost to the lava, however, Steven's got a whole lot of pressure on his shoulders. The only thing standing between him and Jason, who successfully completed the obstacle course, is just one little leap. We're gonna run Come on. Steven with a good push off. Not good enough. Okay, it's not so little. Steven has to bridge a gap that's notably longer than he is tall. Holy mother! This jump is very hard. Do not expect to land on your feet. You're not going to. Don't worry about the pain. You'll feel pain later when you're dead. He gives it his all and he manages to land on the second step, which just so happens to already be covered in about a foot of lava. Go! It's too little too late, and that landing cannot have been easy on his ankle. Number 8. Mike This wipeout doesn't look especially painful, but it sure is painful to watch. If Mike can get himself onto the trunk, he's basically home free. His foot unfortunately slips on contact but he looks like he's caught himself. That lava's slippery stuff, though. And with nothing to grip onto, he eventually slips into the lava. Oh! Oh! oh, oh, oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on! Oh. Oh. No. He was the first of the Little League dads to take the plunge, but not the last. Teammate Scott launches himself from the spinning bed onto a table, only to take it on the shoulder with a sickening thud and tumble into the lava. And while Andy may have managed to stay on dry land, many of his transitions made us wince with pain. Yeah, Andy. Another heavy landing, and that's why in baseball they wear a cup. Hey, can you give me the photo? Yes. Uh, I think Andy's gonna need a minute. <laughs> Number seven, Xavier. Part of the fun of watching any sort of competition show is that, as a viewer, you become something of an at-home expert. And if we learned anything from watching Flora's Lava, it's that you never get on the pyramid or the telescope. Xavier was the first competitor to make contact with the latter obstacle, and though he plans to give it a bear hug, the moment his feet make contact, its instability becomes painfully clear. He's on Mars! Elon Musk will be so jealous. Save, come on, go for it. You're gonna have to hug that. Okay, yeah. I have to hug it. Xavier tries to pivot and change course, but all he does is throw himself face first into a wall of rock. Nobody we've seen has reached the telescope yet. Oh, oh and it looks oh. like Xavier is x out. With Nick having already taken the plunge, it's all on K. Inexplicably, she too goes for the telescope, which promptly tosses her into the lava. Hope she figures out that the telescope tips. Ah! Oh no! She top 
toppled off the telescope and off the scoreboard. Number six, Dan. Well, it was certainly an ambitious approach. Math teacher Dan finally adding himself to the equation. After carefully stepping onto the first planet, Dan attempted to cover two obstacles in one fell swoop, despite the fact that he was taking off from a squishy sphere. The flat Earth, as host Rutledge Wood likes to call it, is a notably slick surface, making it an all-round terrible halfway point to push off from. Dan essentially falls off the flat Earth only to land on a boulder. Dan totally miscalculated that jump. Ironic. It's clearly an uncomfortable landing, but since the rocks here are soft, it doesn't look too painful. Sadly, Dan isn't in the clear. All done. Use calculus. You always said it was worth something. Oh boy. I know this equation. Three minus one equals two. And it's him clinging for dear life before unceremoniously dropping into the lava that really earns him this spot. Number 5. Josen Wipeouts are half the fun of this show. We suspect that many viewers are rooting for the lava rather than the actual teams. It's fascinating to see the many creative ways a body can go down, but when two competitors wipe out in short succession on the same obstacle, that's a rare treat. Alec and Josen both need to go from the fireplace to a slippery trunk. I'm gonna have to somehow get over there. Both Alec and Josen on the fireplace. They need to start working their way to the exit door. The second Josen makes contact with the surface, his feet slip out from under him and he lands hard on his back. The trunk is basically a slip and slide, which promptly carries him into the lava. Go, go Josen. Oh no, Josen got served. Alec, for his part, misjudges the gap and never even makes it to the trunk, smacking his arm on the way down. Alec, not hesitating, reaching out with his foot. Oh, no. Oh, and there, Wimble, done. Number four, Zach. On floor is lava. Until you actually land on an object, it's really hard to judge what sort of surface you're going to be dealing with. When Zach was sizing up that table, he likely wondered just how much grip it had to offer. Zach, four feet away from the round table. From there, it's only two jumps to the exit, but they need to hurry. There's under a minute left to get both men across. Given that it was covered in slick lava, and the same could be said for him, the answer was not much. This fall doesn't look especially painful, but let's pretend for a moment that that's actually lava. Before the plunge, he basically boiled his head. Just drive on the In reality, the temperature of the so-called lava poses no threat, but this wipeout is just so cinematic that we felt it deserved the honor of fourth place. I've heard about using your head, but that's the wrong way to do it. But there's no question, Zach's fellow firefighters back at Station 17 will want to see this again, and again, and again. Number three, Nick. You got a Nick. All right, you got a Nick. Let's hope Nick's hops no no bounds like his teammate. At first glance, you might be wondering how the contenders on Flora's Lava are able to walk away from the show rather than being carried out on a stretcher. If you look closely, however, you'll notice that many of the obstacles are made of materials with a certain amount of give to them. That's all well and good, but when you're dropping from this high and breaking the fall with your face, it's gonna hurt no matter what that island is made of. Nick tries to swing from the pot rack monkey bars and seems well positioned for success. Sizing up his dismount. Therefore, I'm coming. I want a cookie. I'll, I'll keep this for later. Oh, no, no, Nick, no. No. oh, down goes Idea Man Nick. Unfortunately, he misjudges the counter swing of the hanging pot rack and comes down hard, his body parallel to the lava, right on the edge. Whoa, unattached Nick got a hit on a dating app. Chin. Meat Island. Oh, ow. <laughs> Number two, Mitchell. This is the sort of wipeout that even as a viewer, you can't help but worry that you'll be feeling for days. And adding insult to injury, it happened right at the finish line. It can be hard to tell these triplets apart, so we'll just have to take Flora's Lava host Rutledge Wood at his word here when he identifies this poor competitor as Mitchell. 
Just go, don't show off! Oh, sorry. Mitchell using every bit of strength to hold on. It's a good thing he didn't quit his gym membership. He tries to swing from the cargo to safety, but his momentum is all wrong, and so he instead falls from a rather great height, we should add, and absolutely wrecks himself on the steps. Brother Sean soon joins him in the lava, another victim of the pyramid. It's a memorable wipeout, but Mitchell's was downright brutal. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Lindsay, a bold leap that fell short and really must have hurt the armpits. Her swinging momentum is dissipated. This could be trouble. Carl shoots for the moon, makes an impact, but can't come to grips with his new environment. Carl would rather take a flying leap at the moon. People have been yelling at him to do that for years. Oh! In space, no one can hear you scream, but everybody heard that. Alyssa misjudges the chaise lounge and smacks the armrest in style. This is for you. Trying to honor her friend with a seven foot jump to the chaise lounge. From downtown. <laughs> oh no, her tribute has fallen short. Katie slams into the obelisk, but also half in the lava. It's now or never, Katie. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Jen fall short of the table despite putting her body into it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one. DJ. The single most important takeaway from season one of Flora's Lava? Under no circumstances should you ever set foot on a bar stool. You might make it on, which is a feat unto itself, but it's a one-way trip. If you can get on that chair, you can jump across and save time. Dr. Raff's prescription? Take a bar stool and call me in the morning. We already saw Todd go down and take the key with him. Felicia tried a chair-to-chair -chair transfer to no avail. But DJ's encounter with the bar stool is the one that really sticks with us. He takes off like a flying squirrel, but a flying squirrel who tried to jump from a swiveling bar stool. DJ gets tons of height, but it doesn't translate to distance and he comes down hard. Wow. Oh, no! Thank you for your service, doctor. Taking home the gold medal in self-mutilation is Dr. DJ with an incredibly painful dismount in the face. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.